بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان محمد نبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا خاتم النبيين لا نبي بعدي أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Dear brothers, I begin in the name of Allah and thank Him and praise Him and glorify Him. I seek His forgiveness and I ask Allah to send His infinite mercy upon His beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And I ask Allah to guide us all to the right path so that we can all live like Muslims, die like Muslims, and rise like Muslims on the day of Kiamat. But this today, the topic is about the deceptions of Qadianis. How many of you have heard of Qadianis? Can you put your hand up to see how many of you know actually about Qadianis? How many have never heard about Qadianis? Okay. And those of you who've heard about them, do you know what they believe? Or do you know what they're all about? Put your hand up if you've got some idea of what they're all about. Okay. My dear brothers, we believe there is none to be worshipped but Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the? Not just the messenger of Allah, but he is the last messenger of Allah. Every nation is affiliated to their prophet. What separates Jews, Christians and Muslims isn't just belief in Allah, but belief in the respective prophets. Jews believe in all the prophets which were sent before Isa alayhi salam. But when Isa alayhi salam was sent, uh, they refused to acknowledge him. They didn't accept him, so they remained as Jews. Those who accepted Isa alayhi salam, they became a separate nation. They are known as Christians. They accept previous prophets and Isa alayhi salam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sent, Christians, did they accept him? They didn't accept him. Those who rejected Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they remained Christians, they remained Jews. Those who accepted Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they are now known as Muslims. So what separates Jews, Christians, Muslims is not just belief in Allah. Because Christians believe in Allah, Jews believe in Allah, even Hindus believe in, in, in some form of God and so do Sikhs. Uh, so we believe in Allah and we worship Allah the way shown by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We are the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Christians are the ummah of Isa alayhi salam. The Jews are the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Uh, so we believe in Allah, whatever Allah has revealed upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And after the Prophet, Rasulullah said, there will be no more Prophet after me. Allah has made it clear in the Quran, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا حَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not the messenger, is not the father of any amongst you, physical father, uh, but rather he is Rasulullah and he is خَاتَمُ النَّبِيِّينَ Khatam is literal meaning is the seal, but when you seal something, when something is complete and total, then you seal it like you seal a letter. You, when, you, when something is filled, then you seal it so that nothing can get in or nothing can get out. Likewise, Rasulullah is the seal of all the prophets. All the prophets Allah was going to send, he sent before Rasulullah. When Rasulullah came, he was the last. He is now, Nabuvat has been sealed. Nobody else can now become a prophet and not just become a prophet whoever was a prophet before Rasulullah because Nubuwat is Risalat Nubuwat and Risalat is not like a job which you can acquire and lose Allah doesn't sack prophets because if Allah was to sack a prophet that means Allah didn't make the right choice in the first place why do people sack someone because they, it was the wrong guy <laughs> They got the wrong guy, they, you know, they thought he was okay, but he wasn't, so they needed to sack him. So if Allah was to sack a prophet, it means Allah didn't know first, na'uzu billah, who he was making a prophet. So all the prophets Allah chooses, Allah knows they deserve to be prophets. Uh, so Rasulullah's khatamun nabiyyin, all the previous prophets are intact, their mission was complete. Now Rasulullah was sent by Allah and upon Rasulullah, Allah completed deen, the deen which was being sent by Allah to all the prophets. 
from Adam alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and finally Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Deen, Allah's revelation was complete. Deen had been perfected for all the people to come until the day of Qiyamah. Allah commanded Rasulullah to declare, قُلْ يَا يُهَا النَّاسُ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا Say, O oh you people, I am a messenger of Allah for all of you. Now all the people till Qiyamah, now they need to follow. They need to follow. Are you all awake or asleep? Shall I call it a day? <laughs> Perhaps you had a long day. So, <laughs> all the people need to follow who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the prophet for all of them. No more new prophet will come. Rasulullah said that there will be no more Nabi after me. No more Nabi. When we say no more Nabi, it means no more new Nabi. No more new Nabi will come after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabuwat has been completed. Deen has been completed right on the first page of Quran. When you read Alif Lam Mim Zalik al Kitabu la Rayba fi Hudal al Muttaqeen al Ladina Yukminuna bil Ghaybi wa Yukimuna salata wa Mimma Rzakna Mun Fikun wa Ladina Yukminuna bima unzela ilayka wa ma unzela min kablik wa bila khiratihum yukinun. Who are the true believers? Those who believe in the unseen, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ They establish salat, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Whatever we've given them, they spend from it. And وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ They believe in what has been revealed to you. وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And they also believe in what was revealed before you. وَبِلَاخِرَتِهُمْ يُوقِنُونَ And they have firm conviction and belief with regards to the life hereafter. If there was to be any prophet after Rasulullah, Allah would have said here, they believe in what's been revealed to you, what was revealed before you, and when I send something after you, they will believe in it as well. Uh, is there any such verse in the Quran? وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا يُنزَلُ مِنْ بَعْدِكَ No. Uh, so the first page of the Quran, he teaches us that there will be no more revelation after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah is a messenger for all. Allah has declared him in the Quran to be Khatamun Nabiyyin. I've explained the, what the word Khatamun Nabiyyin means. And the Prophet himself made it very clear in more than a hundred different ahadiths. And that Rasulullah is the last Prophet, no more Prophet after him. But the Prophet did say, did say, سَيَكُونُ فِي أُمَّتِي ثَلَاثُونَ كَذَّبُونَ There will be 30 imposters, liars of the highest caliber. In Arabic, the word for a liar is usually kathib. Have you heard of that? لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah's curse upon the liars. Kathib means a liar. But kathib is an ordinary liar. Someone who lies is a kathib. Just as in English, you have big, bigger, and then biggest. Good, better, and best. Small, smaller, and smallest. There are different categories. And in Arabic, similarly, there are categories. Now one is a kathib, he's a liar, he's an ordinary liar. And then there's one prolific liar. In Arabic, that's known as kathub. Kathab is a prolific liar. Liar of the highest caliber. In Arabic, the word for someone who has knowledge is alim. That's the first degree. Alim. Someone who's knowledgeable. Then someone who's very knowledgeable is alim. Wallahu alimun bidhati sudur. Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. Allah knows everything. Allah is alim as well. And alim. But not just alim and alim. Allah is alam. Alamul ghuyub. He has knowledge of absolutely everything. There's nothing like Allah with so much knowledge. So you understand. Alim, alim, alam. Similarly forgiving. Allah is ghafir. Ghafir means forgiving. Allah is also ghafur. Ghafur means very forgiving. But Allah is excessively forgiving. Ghaffarul dhunub. Have you heard of that phrase? Alamul ghuyub, ghaffarul dhunub. Similarly, one is kathib, lanatullahi ala al-kathibin. And there is kazub and there is kathab. Kathab in Arabic is liar of the highest caliber. Uh, similar, one is zalim. Zalim means 
someone who does wrong oppresses people zalim zalum and zalam in arabic these are all words mentioned in the quran this is arabic language rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about those who claim to be prophets they are not just kadhibs liars they are kadhab liars of the highest liars of the highest caliber as big a liar as anybody can be that's the category they are in because they lie upon Allah lie upon Allah they say Allah has given me revelation well Allah has done no such thing Allah says Waman mimman iftara Allah who can be a bigger zalim than someone who lies upon Allah أو قال أوحي إلي ولم يوحى إليه شيء. Or he says Allah has given me a revelation when Allah has done no such thing. So he they lie upon Allah. So it's bad to lie generally, but to lie upon Allah, to lie upon Rasulullah is such a severe sin. He who lies deliberately upon Allah. One is a person he says he makes a statement. In, in a good with good intention in a good gesture but what he said he thought it was right but it, it was actually wrong that's not an intentional lie like many time our tabligh brothers they say things they think it's in the Quran or hadith they say the Prophet said it it might not be a hadith but their intention isn't to lie upon Allah or his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that's not intentional he who lies intentionally upon Rasulullah, he, he knows Rasulullah didn't say it, but still in order to impress people and to make himself be known, he lies, makes up things and assigns them to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet said in a hadith reported by Imam Bukhari, Man kathiba alayya muta'ammidan fal yatabawwa maqa'adahu minan nar. Whosoever lies upon me deliberately has secured himself a place in Jahannam. To lie upon Rasulullah, to lie upon Allah and say things, Allah has given me revelation when Allah has done no such things. Such people are liars, liars of the highest caliber. Do you understand brother? Such people who lie upon Allah and his Prophet are? What are they? Liars of? Highest caliber. So if Allah curses liars, Lanatullah al Kadibin, what about who are Kadhabin? And the Prophet said there will be thirty such Kadhabs. And the Prophet didn't say just Kadhab in, in another hadith, the Prophet said Kadhabun a Dajjalun. A Dajjal is someone who deceives and cheats people. It's from Dajjal. Dajjal in Arabic, in Arabic means a deception. You've all heard of Dajjal, yeah? Why? Do you know why he's known as Dajjal? Because he will cheat people. He's known as Dajjal, the mighty cheater, the biggest cheater ever, because he's making claim to be Allah. When he has no right to make such a claim. He will fool people, he will cheat people, he will show Jannah and Jahannam in his hands. On the right side he will say, those who reject me, he, I'll put them in Jahannam, which will really be Jannat. Those who accept me as God, they will go to Jannah, which will really be Jahannam. So he will cheat people, he will deceive, he will say, I am God. He, Allah will give him such powers uh, that he will, wherever he will go, he will say and it will rain. And those people who believe in him, he will say to people, Shall I, if I raise your dead parents, will you believe in me that I am God? Then shayateen will appear in the form of his dead parents. They will say, son, believe him, he is God. But it will all be deception. So, but deception of the highest degree, hence he is known as Dajjal. Similarly, other people who will cheat people into believing and thinking that they are prophets, such people have been referred to by Rasulullah as Kadhabun Dajjalun. People of the highest caliber, liars, Dajjals. And then, and then the Prophet said, "Kulluhum yaz'amu annahu nabi." They will all think they are nabis, but can they be nabis? They can't be nabis. The Prophet, they will think they are nabis. Ana khatamun nabijin la nabiyya baadi. I am the last Prophet. There is no more Prophet to come after me. 
This is such a fitna, fitna of other, pro- other false prophets. In the Bible, Jesus has talked about people who will claim to be prophets wrongly. Rasulullah has spoken about them. In the life of Rasulullah, there was a man, his name was Musaylama Kadhab. He claimed to be a Nabi. He sent Rasulullah an offer. Okay, let's come to a compromise. Rasulullah said, no compromise with you. You were a Kadhab, Dajjal, no compromise. Abu Bakr anhu sent an army in Khalid ibn Walid to deal with Musaylma Kadhab and he was dealt with. Then there were others, Tulayha Asadi, Aswad Anasi, there was a woman as well. <laughs> uh, she said, uh, Musaylma is a Nabi for the men, I am, a, I am a prophetess for the women. And then throughout the centuries there have been many, many people, they've been dealt with. They were dealt with by Muslims and rejected. Some people followed them as well. Uh, some people will follow anybody. Uh, you make a claim and you're bound to get some following somewhere. Uh, just a few days ago somebody put up uh, a, a, a video of somebody in Holland who was supposedly giving dawah to the queen. People got very excited. Wow, what a die giving dawah in front of the queen. But what they didn't realize, he was saying, I am Isa. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I am Isa, I am Jesus, I am Yesu, whatever you want to call me, believe in Allah that I am the Jesus. Uh, people got very excited, mashallah, what a day. <laughs> uh, but he was making claim to being Isa alayhi salam. People have made all sorts of claims. Uh, and the latest, one of the latest rather in line was a man called Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. He was born in India at the time in the last century and the before India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, this all used to be one country, used to be India. It was known as a subcontinent, it's a mini continent and and mashallah almost one and a half billion people live in these three countries. Uh, And there's more Muslims in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh than probably rest of the world put together. And it's a very large area, very large area with a large population, lot of Muslims there as well. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, in, he was born in 1839 in a place called Qadian in Punjab. And he got some education when he was young and then he started working in, 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 in courts in Sial court. And then something hit him, he, he went into solitary confinement, started doing things and he thought he was getting revelation, shaitan was getting the better of him and then he, he laid a claim that he is, he is a scholar, he's a, he's a mighty man and then he said he's been given inspiration, he is the reformer of the 14th century. The Prophet said there will be no Prophet after me, but when one hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did say, Inna Allah yabasu lihaadhi al-umma ala ra'si kulli mi'ati sanatin man yujaddidu laha deenaha, at the turn of every century Allah will raise a man. Someone from this ummah, he will be pious, saintly man, scholar, and to revive deen for this ummah. Allah will give him knowledge, piety, goodness, taqwa, sincerity. Allah will help him as well. And he will be able to influence people in a way to bring them back to Islam. He won't lay a claim to being a Nabi or someone special and super. He will be humble, sincere person, knowledgeable, pious. And, but in every century Allah will raise such a man. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani said, he was born in 1839, in 1883, he said, right, that was the beginning of the 14th century, Islamically. He said, I am the reformer of this 14th century. And then in 1890, something struck him, he said, no, 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 that's not good enough. I am actually the promised Messiah. Because Rasulullah said, there will be no more prophet after me. The Prophet said there will be 30 imposters, but there will be two very truthful and very pious personalities in many, many ahadiths. In one, uh, with regards to Isa alayhi salam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam has mentioned in more than a hundred different narrations, many of them sahih, reported by 30 different companions, that, I, that Isa ibn Maryam is coming back to you. Innahu nazilun, inna Isa hayyun lam yamut, wa innahu nazilun ilaykum qabla yawm al qiyamah. Isa will come back to you, come down, descend from the heavens before qiyamah. 
This has been the belief of the Ummah for 14 centuries. All the Prophet taught it, Sahaba had this belief, Tabeen, all the Aimma, Imams, Mujtahideen, all the great scholars have all talked about this. The whole Ummah has been expecting the return of Isa alayhi salam. The Prophet also said there will be another very special man in this Ummah. Allah will raise him towards the end of time, before Qiyamah, very close to Qiyamah. Anybody know his name? Who he is? The Mahdi. And the Prophet said he will be from my offspring, from the Zurriyat, children of Fatima. His name, Yuwati Ismuhu Ismi wa Ismu Abihi Ismu Abi. His name will be the same as my name, his father's name will be the same as my father's name. In other words, his name will be Muhammad, his father's name will be Abdullah. He will be from the offspring of Fatima radiallahu anha. He will be an Arab, he will be a ruler over the Arabs, and he will not only be descendant of Fatima radiallahu anha, because as a Fatima had two sons, Hassan and Hussein. He will be a descendant of Hazrat Hassan. Shias believe Imam Mahdi will be descendant of Hazrat Hussein. There's a narration in Abu Dawood, Ali radiallahu anhu said he will be a descendant of Hazrat Hassan. Radiallahu anhu. So we Sunnis are expecting the Mahdi, he will be from the descendants of Hazrat Hassan radiallahu anhu. Because Allah blessed Hazrat Hassan with the Khilafat for a while. Hazrat Hassan gave it up because the Ummah was divided into two very large factions. Hazrat Hassan gave up his, his claim for his half so the Ummah can be united. Ulama have stated that as a result of that sacrifice, Allah will bless Hazrat Hassan's offspring that Allah will raise from his offspring someone who will be a Khalifa and a ruler of the whole Ummah because of his sacrifice. Uh, but the Shias believe that the Mahdi will be from the descendants of Hazrat Hussein, not just will be, he's already been born and he's in a hiding for 1200 years in a cave somewhere, Surah Manra, and nobody knows him. He will appear before the end of time. Sunnis believe he will be born and he will be 40 years old when he will appear. He will be making tawaf. He will be between Hajar Aswad, the Maqam Ibrahim, the pious will recognize him. 313 people initially will accept him as the Khalifa, make bayah on his hands. Then all the Muslims will accept him as the Khalifa and acknowledge him. And he will set about reforming the Ummah, uniting them. And in his time, Allah will give Muslims such prosperity. Prosperity. This Ummah would have never enjoyed such prosperity. And so the Mahdi will come before Qiyamah, then the Jal will come. Then Isa Islam will come down from the heavens to kill the Jal. On he will descend on the eastern white minaret in Damascus. Uh, and at the time, the Mahdi, he or would have already been in place for seven years and he will be forming an army. He will be about to pray Salat when Isa Islam will descend. The Mahdi will offer him the opportunity to lead them in Salat. He will say, no, no, you lead. You become the Imam, I will pray behind you. Then he will, after praying Fajr Salat, he will pursue the Jal, catch up with him at Lud and then kill him. Then Yajuj Majuj will appear, Isa Islam will take all the people at Tur, pray to Allah, Allah will get rid of them and Allah will, will cause a bacteria in, or something or insects to grow in their necks which will cause their death. And then Allah will send large birds, will pick up the bodies of Yajuj Majuj and dump them in remote places. Then the rain will come washing away all the world and the world will become a wonderful place. The earth will give up all its goodness and barakah. And Allahu Akbar, it become a nice place. And then in the time of Isa alayhi salam, lions will graze with camels, wolves will drink on the same pond as lamb, uh, with lambs, and children will play with snakes. One pomegranate, you know what pomegranate is? Anar. Huh? It's nice, you know, if you try it. <laughs> uh, one anar will be enough for a whole family in the time of Isa alayhi salam. And in his Isa will 
distribute so much wealth, nobody will accept wealth. All the Christians will accept him as, not as Ibnullah, son of Allah, but as Abdullah and Rasulullah. All the Christians who will remain at the time, and the Jews who will remain, they will all become Muslim. And Rasulullah said, Yolekallahu fi zamanihi al milala kullaha. That Allah will destroy all other nations, wipe them out. Only Islam will remain throughout the world. Everybody will become Muslim. Has that happened? Why not? Because Isa hasn't come yet, alayhi salam. So when Isa alayhi salam will come, the world will know him. And then all the Christians, because they think Jesus died on the cross. When they will see Isa is alive, alayhi salam, they will know that was a wrong, that was a wrong myth. Like last year on the 21st of December, many thought the world was going to end. Did it end? When it didn't end, people knew, sorry, it was a wrong, wrong call. <laughs> wrong time, wrong place. A wrong idea. Uh, so they thought they knew they were wrong. Uh, so if Isa Islam had come, then all the crosses would have been broken, all the churches would have turned into masjid, there would have been no more pigs. <laughs> there would be no more pork on sale. Now even lamb is, pork is being sold as lamb. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Did you hear about those halal burgers supposed containing pork? Yeah, some, was, some people were selling halal burgers containing pork. Allahu Akbar. So you know Isa alayhi salam hasn't come. Why? Because the things which were supposed to happen upon his return haven't happened. So Mirza Qadiani initially said he's a reformer and then for him that wasn't good enough. Then he said, you know what? The Ummah has been waiting for Isa for 1300 years. He hasn't come down. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and people said, well, what about the things that he was supposed to do? He was supposed to come down on the eastern minaret in Damascus. He said, okay, well, let's build a minaret. <laughs> people said, well, he, you were supposed to come down. Doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, let's build one. I'll go up and then come down. <laughs> and he says, what about you were supposed to kill the jal at Lud? You know where Lud is? Presently in Israel. It's near Tel Aviv. They've got a big air base, I've heard there. And many years ago, there was a young man, he came to spend four months in Jamaat. He came to, from Lud. He came from Lud. It's okay. And mashallah, we met him here in London, Marcus. Then we went to India, we met him there as well. So Lud is in Israel. And he was supposed to kill the Jal. Isa alayhi salam will kill the Jal at Lud, as Rasulullah said. He said, no, 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 it doesn't mean killing a person, the Jal at Lud. It means killing those, the jal means someone who cheats people. And in one hadith, true hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet said, Ma min nabiyin illa anzara qawmahu. There hasn't been any Prophet who has not warned his people of the coming of the jal. So he said, this is the biggest fitna ever, he'll be a cheat. I'm telling you, Mirza Qadiani said, the biggest cheats ever have been the Christian priests. They've been deceiving, cheating people. So they are the jal. And I said, well, you were supposed to kill them. He said, well, no, no, it didn't mean you are supposed to kill them. It meant I was supposed to defeat them. In debates, in arguments, in reasons, and so on. So I said, well, you were supposed to kill the jal at Lud. He said, not Lud, in Ludhiana. Ludhiana was a town in India, in Punjab, near where Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani was born and lived. He said, well, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam referred to, according to a hadith narrated in Bukhari, the Prophet said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي لَيُوشِكَنَّ يَنْزِلَ فِيكُمْ إِبْنِ Maryam." The Prophet said, I swear by him who holds my life in his hands, very surely, definitely, Ibn Maryam will come down. He's... And your and and his and your mother's name is Chirag Bibi. <laughs> the man who's coming down, son of Maryam, you are son of Chirag Bibi. And you were supposed to kill the Jal at Lud. He said, No, no, I was supposed to defeat the Christian priests at Ludhiana. And he says, Of course, an end to Christianity. Has Christianity finished? Are there any churches in Hackney? <laughs> Do they have the big cross hanging up there? <laughs> so Christianity hasn't finished. He goes, but now I've defeated Christianity. How? He said, with regards to Isa there are basically five views in the world. 
the Jews used to say that Isa is a legit, illegitimate son of Maryam. He's making these wrong claims. He deserves to die a shamefully humiliated, humiliating death. So they captured, they think they captured him, put him on the cross, and they think he died. Allah says in the Quran, وَبِكُفْرِ وَقَوْلِ مَلَا مَرْيَمَ بُهْتَانًا عَظِيمًا وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ The Jews, they say, we've killed Isa ibn Maryam. He, he deserves to die. The Christians, they say, God actually came down in the form of Jesus, and he took the sins of the people upon him, and then because humans are sinners by birth, we came on earth because Adam Islam ate from the forbidden tree in Jannah, in heaven. So we, then he was sent down to the earth, so he came here having sinned in Jannah, Christians they say. Allah says in the Quran, Fanasi, I forgot. A sin is a thing which you do intentionally, deliberately you disobey Allah, that's a sin. Unintentionally, Adam Islam, he did unintentionally. And anyway, Allah forgave him for that as well. Allah says in the Quran, Allah forgave him and because of his tawbah and so on. But Christians believe because sin is such a bad thing, it's a burden, it's punishable by death. The only, if you sin, you deserve to die. You don't deserve to live if you're a sinner. And so, Adam salam came down to earth. He couldn't live in the company of God anymore in heaven. So God sent him down to earth. He had his children here. So we were born here because of a sin. So we are sinners by birth. It's like your parents might be Bangla- have come from Bangladesh. But because you were born here, you still Bengalis basically. Yeah? Anybody Pakistani? Parents came from Pakistan. They're born here, but basically they're still Pakistanis. Somalis, their parents have come from Somalia. They've, they might have been born here, their children, but they will still think they're Somalis, yeah? So similarly, Adam al Islam's children might have been born here, but Christians, they say they're still sinners because they were born because of sin. So they all deserve to die. But because God is merciful as well, He doesn't want to punish them. So God came down in the form of a human Himself, in the form of Jesus, and then went, died on the cross. So that carrying the sins of those who believe in him and then he died on the cross, came down, he was buried in the tomb, he died on a good Friday. That's why a few weeks ago Christians celebrated Easter and the Friday before Easter is known as Good Friday. For Muslims every Friday is Good Friday. But for the Christians one Friday every year is a Good Friday. So they say he died on the cross on the Good Friday, brought down, he was buried in the tomb, he rose from the dead because he was God. And so he rose from the dead and then went to the heavens. So the Christians believe, Jews believe Jesus died, they killed him. Christians believe Jesus died for another reason. Muslims believe Isa salam wasn't captured. Allah sent Jibreel, he took him up. Safely people wanted to kill him but Allah saved him. Allah says in the Quran, uh, إِنِّي وَرَافِعُكَ إِلَيَّ وَمُطَهِرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَرَّفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ They didn't kill him, they didn't crucify him. Allah raised him to himself uh, and they definitely, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا They definitely did not kill him. So what happened? بَرَّفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah raised him alive to the heavens. And there's wisdom. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا Immense wisdom of Allah. And the wisdom is Allah will send him back before the end of time, Qiyamah, to kill the Jal. And then all the Christians will believe in him as well as being Rasulullah and Abdullah and not as Ibnullah. And then Isa Islam will live for 40 years. Then يَتَزَوَّجُ وَيُولَدُ لَهُ Get married, have children and then die in normal death. Uh, after having killed the Jal and dealt with Yajuj Majuj as well, he will die a normal death and be buried next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina. Mirza Qadiani was said, well, you were supposed to do all that. What happened to Yajuj Majuj? He says, the Russians and the Europeans are Yajuj Majuj. Because <laughs> Yajuj Majuj will go everywhere. So these Russian and Europeans, they've colonized the world, you know, they've gone everywhere. So they are Yajuj Majuj. Uh, and subhanallah, Mirza Qadiani gave all these funny uh, deceptive interpretations of everything and he laid a claim that he eventually when he was when he was through done with 
being the promised Messiah, he used to call himself the promised Messiah. Then he thought even that wasn't good enough. Then he tried to put himself in parallel with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he said, I am such a Nabi, even all previous Nabis wanted to you know, see me. <laughs> in one place he's written, once he was sitting with his, with his followers and he said to them, you guys are so lucky. Why? Because you've seen me. I'm the guy many prophets wanted to see as well. <laughs> and then he said, all the previous prophets, whatever their goodness, uh, Allah has given all their goodness in me. I, I, I am a combination, a porridge of all the goodness of all the prophets. Nauzubillah min thalik. Mirza Qadiani was such a liar. And then he made up all these funny all these wrong claims from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Allah makes mention in the Quran about Qiyamah that nobody knows Qiyamah except when is Qiyamah going to be? What year is Qiyamah? Do you know? Any Maulana here? Put your, put your hand up if you're a Maulana. Any Hadith when Qiyamah is going to be? Mirza Qadiani said, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said the Messiah will come in the 14th century. And he will come in Punjab in India. He goes, all the pious people have been speaking about this as well. When there is not a single hadith anywhere, not even sahih or weak or even fabricated for that matter. <laughs> where the Prophet made mention of the 14th century. And Mirza's book are full of the 14th century. He said, the Christians have been expecting Isa in the 14th century. The Jews are expecting a Messiah. The Buddhists, the Hindus and all the people of the world are expecting some special messiah in the 14th century that's me and subhan when isa alayhi salam was supposed to come then the whole world was supposed to be filled with islam has it happened okay. and the prophet said when isa will come wa yufidul mal hatta la yaqbaluhu ahad he will distribute so much wealth and nobody will accept wealth anymore and people will take money here brother i've got a couple of hundred thousand pounds please take it does that happen now <laughs> anybody the brother will say you you want to give brother please take it I don't, I don't need it I've got so much brother this is all spare because much the world will become so good and there'll be no harm and no hurt to anybody from anything the earth will give up its riches there'll be so much barka in everything so mashallah people won't need it so people will want to give nobody will want to take is that what happens now Everybody says, Bash, kullu halal, bismillah. <laughs> Whatever way, just let it come, man, come. Many brothers, they ask, you know what, Maulana, is it, is it alright if I buy a ticket, you know, for the rollover? <laughs> I'll, I'll give half to the masjid. <laughs> Whether halal or haram, whatever, people say bismillah, kullu halal. But in the time of Isa alayhi salam, nobody will want to accept it. Even Qadianis are appealing every other day now. So whenever there is an appeal for any cause, uh, for any part of the world, for anything, be it Pakistan, Palestine, Somalia, Ethiopia, Iraq, Bangladesh, wherever. Each time somebody says, brothers, our Muslim brothers are dying. We've got to help them. Brothers, please give generously. Have you heard these appeals? Yeah. So whenever anybody appeals for any cause, you know Isa salam hasn't come. <laughs> because if Isa salam had come, nobody will be asking. So every day, mashallah, Muslim aid, human relief, Islamic relief, Red Cross and others. Every day you switch on the internet, whatever news, newspapers. There's hundreds, if not thousands of appeals. All conclusive evidence that Isa alayhi salam has not come. Mirza said, well, Amit. He died on the 26th of May 1908. Mirza also said to his people, because that Isa alayhi salam is to be the last Messiah from Allah and he said he'll be the he'll be the reformer of the last century that was the 14th century you know what century we are in now 15th century so just as on the 20th was it the first or the second on the 21st of December people thought the world was going to end when it didn't end and the 22nd of December came everybody knew it was a false myth. Mirza said 14th century is the last century. So when the 15th century started, Qadianis should have realized Mirza was a liar and dumped him. 
and turn their backs to them but they still they carry on and uh, defending his kufr his lies and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said uh, that people who lie upon allah lay claim to being a nabi they are not just liars they are kadhabs they are dajjals uh, and they are all doomed to jahannam because believing making an imposter a kadhab and a dajjal into a nabi and this is a big fitna my dear brothers this fitna there are approximately well no one really knows the exact number uh, but there are qadianis in bangladesh qadianis in india qadianis in pakistan qadianis in arab world palestine thousands of qadianis east africa west africa london america canada and these qadianis the tens of millions of them have and and many of them their ancestors were muslims and they've become qadianis and so for the ummah to lose even one muslim to become a kafir and because they are followers of a kafir so followers of a kafir are are also are also kafir they think they are muslims but they are not muslims uh, like molana was saying they, their names are like muslims they even they build temples they call them masjids we call them temples and somebody might think but don't say that people even pray there well allah has made a mention in the quran of a masjid which people built <coughs> it was called masjid darrar the munafiqs built it they asked rasulullah to come and pray there so that rasulullah would endorse it allah said na 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 la taqum fihi abada wal ladina takhadhu masjidan diraran wa kufran wa tafriqan bayna al mu'minin wa irsadan liman harab allah wa rasulahu min qabl wa la yahlifunna in aradna illa al husna wallahu yashhadu innahum la kadibun la taqum fihi abada they are liars they say we just mean well but allah says they are liars don't ever pray in there allah forbid rasulullah allah refers to it in the mas- as a masjid uh, but allah forbid rasulullah so similarly these qadianis they say they build a masjid they call mirza ghulam mahmud qadiani nabi they call his first successor abu bakr like khalifa and they refer to his wife as ummul mu'minin na'uzu billah min zalik uh, ummul kafirin uh, not ummul mu'minin his wife was ummul kafirin uh, his first khalifa they call him like abu bakr his second khalifa was mirza san they call him like umar na'uzu billah min zalik uh, so they claim to read the kalima just because they read the kalima and they build temples they call the masjids that doesn't mean they are masjids they are still temples uh, so muslims should not pray behind them uh, the whole ummah has unanimously declared them as kafirs because they believe in another nabi after rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ha mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani wa he was unlike any other nabi unlike any other nabi the old nabis had single names adam nuh ibrahim ishaq yaqub musa isa muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani says allah has given me the name ghulam ahmad qadiani not just a single or a double but a triple name a triple trouble uh, ghulam ahmad qadiani no prophet had ever the name ghulam in front of his name prophets are not servants of anybody prophets are servants of allah rasulullah said we prophets are like brothers the qadianis they say ghulam ahmad servant of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he wasn't a servant of rasulullah he was a traitor of rasulullah because he tried to put himself on the same seat as rasulullah no prophet ever wrote a book allah gave musa alaihi salam torat daud alaihi salam zabur isa alaihi salam was given injil rasulullah did rasulullah write quran rasulullah was given quran no prophet ever wrote a book mirza qadiani wrote about 80 books his followers have compiled them in encyclopedia called ruhani khazain i call them shaitani khazain <laughs> they're full of kufr and, and shaitani stuff no prophet ever wrote a book mirza wrote many books no prophet used to read or write mirza Qur- and uh, mirza qadiani learned to read he used to write he's written many books no prophet was a poet mirza qadiani was a poet as well Uh, all prophets were sent with the language of their own people mirza was a punjabi he should have spoken only punjabi or urdu the most uh, mirza spoke arabic mirza spoke persian he even tried to speak english he's put down in his anything allah said to me i love you <laughs> <laughs> 
Mirza Qadiani was such a clown. <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, all prophets were sent with the language of their people. Uh, Mirza spo- he, he, he should have only spoken Punjabi or Urdu. He tried to speak Persian. And then the Qadiani is there. He's an international Nabi. <laughs> well, Rasulullah is definitely international Nabi. Did Rasulullah speak English, Persian, any other language? Only Arabic. Uh, Rasulullah was a truly international, global, universal Nabi. Uh, but Rasulullah spoke only Arabic. All prophets only spoke language of their own people. Uh, all prophets were descendants after Ibrahim alayhi salam from Ibrahim alayhi salam spring, offspring. Mirza Qadiani, his, his ancestors were Chinese Mughals. <laughs> I'm not laughing at Chinese people. No, no, mashallah, they are makhluq of Allah as well. Many Chinese are Muslims as well. Uh, but the fact that Mirza Qadiani claiming to be a Nabi, but his ancestors were Chinese Mongols. Uh, Subhanallah. All prophets did Hajj. Mirza Qadiani didn't do Hajj. No prophet ever used to have a wet dream. Mirza Qadiani used to have a wet dreams. In one place, uh, all prophets were men. Mirza Qadiani said he lost his manhood and he became a woman. And then he even became pregnant. He remained pregnant for 10 months and gave birth to himself. And then from Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani, he became Maryam, then he became Isa. Now, what a clown, man. <laughs> so, no prophet ever had a wet dream. Mirza Qadiani used to have wet dreams. All prophets did Hajj. Mirza Qadiani didn't do Hajj. Isa alayhi salam, when he will come back, he will do Hajj. No prophet ever inherited anything from his fathers or left anything for his children. Mirza Qadiani inherited a lot of land his father was given by the British and he left it to his sons as well. And, and subhanallah, and as well as that, every prophet, he dies and is buried at the place where he dies. Rasulullah sallallahu wasallam died in Medina, was buried there. Mirza Qadiani, he died. An acute diarrhea, he was vomiting and he was up and down. <laughs> Masha, hundred times a day he used to run to the toilet. And eventually he died in Lahore, his body was taken to Qadian to be buried there. So Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani was nothing but a prolific liar. Uh, he, if, you know, I of, if, uh, there was an American, he, he, he wrote a book, it's called A Ranking of the Hundred Most Influential Men in History. Have you heard about that? You know who he put number one? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as the most influential man in history i say if people were to compile a ranking of the 100 most prolific liars in the history of humanity you know who number 1 will be mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani he will be the number one liar in the world he's spoken so many lies lies upon allah lies upon rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam but people follow him people follow him and may Allah save us. They've got a Sky channel as well, MTA TV. Many people think, oh, mashallah, big buzurug, you know, mashallah, sheikh. <laughs> and they, he wears, he's got a white beard, wears a ramama, mashallah, and so on. Uh, but he is, and again, a pakka dajjal. A pakka kafir, you know, he's solid kafir through and through. So you, may Allah save us, brothers. Uh, in the universities, a lot of youngsters becoming Qadianis as well. And they listen to their kufr and subhanallah, they get trapped. It's like the mouse sees the cheese and he runs and then he becomes well. Then he's gone. So these people, they lay traps in different ways and people fall for them. And they think, oh man, he was, he was the Messiah. He's come and gone. Well, if he would have come and gone, then the world would have been full of Islam. But the world isn't full of Islam yet. So it shows and proves Isa alayhi salam hasn't come yet. May Allah save us all, brothers.